Welcome back to MTVTA, guys. I'm your guys' host, Trent Manager. Uh, all my returning guys, welcome back. All my new viewers, of course, welcome. Glad to have you guys here. So our today, guys, we're bringing you guys a little bit of overview video, uh, leaning more towards my developers, as we're going to be taking a deep dive into the AI pair uh, programming helper, which is going to be um, uh, GitHub Copilot. So uh, more from GB3, uh, also known as Microsoft. Uh, they have implemented a little AI helper that has been somewhat very, very impressive from what I've been able to work with it, that uh, really gives the implementation of extending your editor uh, speaks all languages for you and uh, pretty much acts as a co-pilot for uh, giving you um, any sort of hints and or you know filling out uh, existing code uh, that you have put comments for um, so such for example here we can replace just so shortly here um, as we're going to dive into vs code here in a minute and give a full overview um, but just for example uh, let me just throw a quick one out there so in the solidity language um, how this would definitely be helpful for um, not only just people in the solidity area but also um, python javascript and c sharp as well is that um programming a uh, enum function um, instead of uh, having to you know state your waiting ready and active so what you can do um, or at least what gopilot can do is that it's going to state uh, your contra your constructors and your functions and give you kind of a a rough outline for if this is what you want to write and really can save you uh, the amount of time that you're spending on documents and of course uh, instead of going to stack overflow and doing all these google searches um, this really does seem like you have a really uh, great copilot right next to you giving you ideas and or recommendations for um, how to execute some of these um, uh, some of these projects. So uh, just in a second here, we're going to be diving into VS Code, and we're going to actually be doing some live examples so you can see how this thing actually is um, is generating these answers and overall helping you know continue to keep your project on task. For to VS Studio Code, first we're going to see the GitHub Copilot add-on. So depending on when your sign up date is, I'm not sure if this is rolled out to everybody just yet, but I did get on the earlier list, so this has been readily available to me for quite a while. So usually when you launch a sub, you can install it. You may require a reset of your machine or just the github uh, i'm sorry excuse me just the vs studio code client uh, down here you can see just the deactivate and activate copilot and of course the notes feature uh, contributions and some other things if you definitely uh, want to go that route and do a little bit of uh, um, deeper digging so actually we're going to hop over into um, our text editor and we're actually going to you know have a little bit of fun with this so um, let's kind of hop in here and let's test out some some small things and see how um, how attentive and um, how how on par um, this copilot is with uh, with what we may want to do. So taking this first contract, I'm just going to do start a simple kind of solidity contract. Let's not kind of throw too much uh, to go out there. And let's see what this thing can uh, keep up with. So let's do a pragma solidity and let's do 0 0.4.0. Uh, and you can see now, look, it's already kind of giving us suggestions. So um, and we're gonna take this down to contract and let's do um, my uh, contract uh, Test. Actually, let's just do my contract test. Awesome. So let's start up here. So let's see. Let's see how this pot has recommended to us. So let's actually break these down. So it's actually telling us right after our contract. And my solidity people, of course, you guys can definitely relate to this. Is that it's giving us the recommendation that uh, our uh, it is pulling a function uh, get value uh, for a public constant. So it is telling uh, Copilot is telling us that it is giving us the recommendation that we want to implement this function to get our main value for this entire contract. So whether that value is one, two eight whatever it may be uh, through this entire contract it's giving us the implementation as to hey um, I would like to pull this main value and make this public uh, constant throughout our contract so I mean not a bad recommendation of course uh, I, I can't tell you how many times that I've started a contract like this, but um, it's probably well over 35%. So actually, this is not what we want to do. So actually, we, what we can do here is what you can see here is that you can do the accept uh, tab here, and you can accept this um, this recommendation. So if we just click tab, it's going to implement that for us. So write that exactly how it is, so saving you a ton of time. And so if we actually end up undoing that, we can actually pass that. So going uh, to the right now, we can actually open in Copilot, uh, which is a whole different browser, which where it kind of has its own little IDE remix, which is kind of cool, uh, which I found super useful. But we're just going to stay in the studio code just for simplicity purposes. Um, and also going over to the next and uh, previous recommendation. So you can actually cycle through uh, previous and next recommendation. It gives you uh, multiple layouts as to you know possibly uh, what your idea could be. So I think that is um, something 
very, very interesting and something really, really cool uh, to save you a ton of time. So actually, this is not what we are trying to do uh, for this contract. So we are going to continue and see uh, how this does. So what we're going to be trying to implement here is we're going to be doing an enum state and it's going to be the uh, the order of waiting, ready, and active. So just like you would kind of see in a backend overstack of, you know, DEXs. So, you know, you sending your transaction, uh, you're waiting for the confirmation of the block time, and then you could go from ready. So all your block time, uh, all your block stamps are compromised and then active in terming of, let's say active being uh, the money has now settled into your account just for the terms of a uh, blockchain developer, just to make it a little bit easier on myself and those who are kind of already in the space. So um, what we want to do here is actually we're going to continue. So let's implement our enum state and um, let's see what recommendations it actually does give us if it does give us any at all. So we're going to be putting in our recommendations of waiting. Sorry guys, oh man, typing is going rough today. Uh, waiting and then we're gonna go ready. And then we are gonna go after that, see, as you guys can see, it's kind of already giving us recommendations for um, uh, for really what we want here. So again, it's giving us the activation finish. So we're actually just going to um, to stick with this right now, and we're going to continue. So let's see how well it does. State, um, we're actually going to define that public. So still good recommendation, and state, and then close curly braces. So, um, and then let's actually continue this, go down, let's go to our constructor. And let's see what it gives us recommendation. So actually, you know, now, now we're getting onto our constructor function. This is um, this is this is pretty good. This is what I was honestly going to write. Uh, we are going to make our constructor public, so it's public to everybody on the blockchain. It's going to state that we are continually waiting, uh, giving us that indication that we need to go in that order um, before uh, before things are executed. So. Um, where we're sitting at now, I mean, it's given us a pretty good overall um, for us shortcuts. And I mean, really where I think this is going to be utilized the best is not only for, you know, this isn't going to write your entire project for you, but in terms of really saving you time and just overall how you want to approach, um, you know, the project at hand, um, I, I definitely believe that this is something that is very, very useful. And um, as we continue to move forward, um, I'm going to go over some further examples and we're going to jump into the IDE remix uh, to uh, show, um, you know, how correct and how secure this code is of course you know there uh, you would always want to review uh, your, your everything that you've wrote but you know just right off the bat I'd love to see how secure and how fun you know how functional uh, some of this uh, some of these scripts are so hopping back into um, GitHub's copilot here, we can see on the right hand side we have the copilot open. So now let me go over pros and cons as to you know how this is going to be you know really utilized from you know full form project code to you know of course just learning and kind of giving some rough ideas. So starting off with my pros and cons, um, you can see that we have a list of solutions here, uh, about ten out of ten solutions, um, all contributing to you know different outputs as to you know what our project, uh, or, I'm sorry for what uh, we could be looking for in our project. So um, from my view, uh, they're a little bit all over the place, but in terms of starting points as to where you can start um, with, with any one of these solution codes on the side, you can see how you know, that could be a very good starting point for you. But in terms of this thing pushing out you know, production grade code in terms of finalization, um, I, I, I don't think uh, we are exactly there yet. So on with GitHub Copilot, um, pros and cons. I'm overall very satisfied uh, with how this application functions uh, from day to day. Uh, it is not perfect. Uh, pros and cons, of course, surface in every single um, new piece of technology that comes around. But um, overall, in terms of the utilization from group projects and single projects, this is be beyond beneficial. Um, not only is this giving you ideal solutions as to you know which route you can go, but also giving uh, some sort of external thought as well for you know possibly some things that you may have not thought about um, moving forward. Actually, so do not leave just yet. We're actually going be doing a deeper dive into uh, the background, the truth about AI programming. Uh, this is not anything new. Um, we've known this for you know several years now. As to you know, back in 2008, this has uh, kind of been something that's been on the rise in implementation as AI machine learning has increased. Also, we are going to be going over kind of just at the end here, uh, protocol four, as to how uh, when that does come along, and as we continue to move in the direction that we are, that of course that code would possibly be um, infrastructure ready, uh, as like uh, as the examples that we have uh, discussed here today. So stick around. I will see you guys just here in the next part before we wrap up that we used in Visual Studio Code with the help of GitHub Copilot and put that into Remix and see how it actually did end up functioning. So we ended up did pass in the deployment stage, which is always a green thumbs up. And now what we can do is we're going to deploy this
this contract onto the blockchain. So when we do hit deploy, uh, we have three buttons on the side, which is going to be our activate is active in our state. So like we talked about at the beginning, uh, we did our enum paraphrases, which is going to be um, our state of the enum, which would be waiting, ready, and active. So kind of the way you would implement this in the real world and how this would be really put in a real life contract is that uh, think about the way that you would, um, you know, you pay for your Bitcoin or your Ethereum. So you would go through the waiting stage, which would be the processing stage of your uh, your funds. And then your ready stage would be the block stamp confirmations, um, you know, for your funds to be settled. And then activate would be the active as to letting the platform no third party or not that your funds are ready to go and that they have been authenticated so if we look over to the right here um, we can easily play around with this um, we have our call data uh, button at the at the bottom as well so what we can do is that we can click is active and is, and is active should bring us false um, just because we have not activated our um, our function to let us the contract know that this is true so it, the bool is going to be stating us false which is what we want and then we, what we can do is click state and state should also be bringing us zero because we have not activated this contract for any sort of functionality at all so, but actually now if we do go back to activate now we get another green check mark which will be implemented uh, to the left here, um, which should be giving us the now is active, which should be switching to true, like we just saw right here. So this is kind of just a little play out as to you know what the contract you know did, but also and getting back to the main topic as to what GitHub Copilot did is that you know I mean it did implement us a successful contract. So hopping into our closing section, uh, the truth behind AI programming. So as I talked about earlier, um, this was nothing particularly new, and we're going to be going through some quick examples and facts as to kind of the background as to how. Uh, GitHub Copilot came to be, and just some overall facts and information that I think are going to be really, really helpful. So hopping into just 2008, like we discussed, uh, this is nothing new as the terms of tech giants such as IBM, uh, Microsoft, and Intel have been developing developer resources uh, to contain you know, AI algorithms uh, for quite a while now. So what we have here is just we saw the buyout of Stack Overflow for $1.8 billion. This was about in 2019, I believe. Of course, I'm going to have all these links in the description for you guys to, to check out um, weeks before actually actually excuse me weeks after this uh gdp actually ends up emerging so you know you can kind of see how the two and two kind of played in the hand here you have uh, stack overflow one of the best uh, free utilizations for developers around the world to collaborate with one another besides github and then you have gp3 kind of enter as um, stack overflow is bought out so you can kind of just see uh, the correlation between a lot of these bigger tech giants as um, they continue to move forward just like we are uh, as single developers so going over to the next slide uh, since the information is free microsoft can utilize the open source github repos and algorithm ideas for themselves. So the, G, the GP3 model, we're actually going to go through, just hop over here in a second. Uh, I'm going to have this link, uh, link below as well, uh, just because this is a lot to cover, but you can kind of just see the input and output prompt. You can see how uh, things are navigated on the GP3 uh, in terms of the output. Um, as I keep scrolling down, you're going to see a lot more in-depth as to how this algorithmic, algorithmic code um, and uh, uh, um, kind of puts together and uh, outputs uh, all these functions. And we're going to be talking about these parameters here in uh, just a minute. So going on to our third, we're actually going to be seeing some examples of exactly how uh, OpenAI is, is working with GP3. And um, some examples we have here is summarizing a complex article for a second grader, which I think is beyond impressive. We're going to check out here in a second. Uh, translating existing language via code and cultural. So of course, we're talking about languages such as Python, C Sharp, uh, JavaScript, and so on. And of course, cultural language such as ma uh, Mandarin, uh, you know, English, and Spanish. You know, that, that, that is definitely something that it can do as well, which is beyond impressive and uh, as well as um, explaining its own code uh, back to its own user. So taking complex code and the uh, GP3 is able to you know, uh, relay that code to you as it was a teacher to you, which is pretty nuts. So hopping over into the examples for OpenAI, the API connections, you can see uh, just here for the prompt and the sample response that the, uh, the algorithmic uh, output puts back to us. Uh, so you can just read that here for a second. I'm gonna have all these links below for you guys to check out. Um, moving on with that, uh, now we're kind of kind of beginning into the, um, into the neural network and kind of how uh, this is really going to play out through some visual images. So you can see on the left here the unsupervised pre-training that we have between the GP3 and the uh, the GP3 through the uh, unsupervised pre-training is that you have about 175 billion parameters um, of value of how these algorithms 
al algorithms are taking uh, these open source software and running them through these intense uh, tests and you know outputting such as an example like we saw uh, today. So uh, how we saw in uh, the VS Studio code how um, the copilot was able to not only take GitHub repos from open source but also from its own existing database and uh, output those. That's exactly what we saw. So even on the left here, or continuing on the right, we see the simple neural uh, the simple neural network as to how um, you know these algorithms are coded together. Um, this has been tested uh, by the parameters, as you can see, for a very, very long time. And uh, this is something that, you know, this is only you get outputs. The, the, the only outputs you get such as this are, you know, testing between, um, you know, this amount of parameters. So just to even give that an example of how many parameters that really is and the testing and the overall network that that has to go through, uh, you're seeing right here is 175 billion parameters. And of course, there are other, um, there, there are other algorithmic platforms out there that utilize the same thing, but you can see the gap between the 13 billion and the 175. I mean, granted, let's talk about just the huge gap that you have here. You're not even breaking 20, and this is sitting at 175. So uh, you can kind of see the disproportion that we have here between the GP3, uh, the GP3, and pretty much every other algorithmic code um, situation that we have currently available. So even going over to OpenAI, we're kind of going to wrap up here just in a second. Uh, we're going to be talking about how uh, the nonprofits, uh, OpenAI was nonprofit in 2015. Uh, the 2019 one billion investment from Microsoft was around September 2020. Um, OpenAI shifts from nonprofit to cat profit uh, with investors such as Elon Musk, uh, Sam Bankman, Freed, I believe as well uh, in the crypto space, and plenty other really big tech and fintech enthusiasts. Um, moving on forward, uh, we have Microsoft um, not being, well, technically, Microsoft does not control OpenAI, but with large investments, they kind of do. Um, but this is also something to keep note that Microsoft exclusively uses GP3, of course, for themselves. But of course, every enterprise and other companies can utilize those API connections and be made and utilize their own projects. But when it really boils down to it, who has really control over uh, GP3 is going to be Microsoft and how they can utilize those uh, databases of their own uh, and you know moving forward for their existing projects. So it, it may seem it, it is free, but in terms of what Microsoft really owns, they technically do have all the secret rights in terms of you know the real uh, database that they constructed. So um, that being said, uh, Microsoft essentially has the best such overall um, best algorithmic system for producing projects uh, that no one else really has right now, um, unless someone else can match right now, uh, unless someone else can match uh, GP3, uh, GPT-3, or of course make a better solution. Um, and now moving on to some fun here, we can kind of just see uh, kind of some steps uh, that we've had in the past in terms of Microsoft hasn't always been the best uh, for catering to developer needs. It wasn't always this good, um, but we've seen over the years, uh, as we've seen with GitHub Copilot, um, even just GitHub in general, we've seen the remake that Microsoft has done, uh, especially with VS Code as well, being able to airdrop your respiratories uh, right into your Visual Studio, code, uh, Visual Studio Code, being able to connect to GitHub uh, with external cloud devices uh, on laptops for even better transferring. Um, the developer kind of whole ring has came around. Uh, as Microsoft really has catered more to their developers and making it, their job a lot easier and um, more secure. So uh, what we see here is that we see the embrace, extend, and extinguish. So if you've kind of known about this, this is something that it's been kind of tossed around for a little while. But you know, the embrace is you know the big hugs from mom and pops, and then we see the extension, uh, the extension to be able to help those individuals you know succeed, and then we have the extinguish, which is the um, pretty much the squash out, you know, pretty much tossing you to the side and saying, hey, this is all we needed from you. So developers are expensive, scarce, and can you know of course make errors as every human does. So with that being said, we can definitely have some fun of how um, developers can be replaced in the real world as this uh, machine learning and these algorithms become pure and much, much better as we move forward. So something that would look like, like this, just for just some quick examples, uh, we can have developer share code to database, awesome, uh, build, uh, build an AI with that data, of course, like we've seen, uh, reinforcement with the AI with developers. So developers, will, of course, go back, check the algorithmic um, codes that like, like we just did, even though Copilot gave us recommendations. We did not take all those recommendations, and, and instead we actually did end up uh, fixing it. But then, of course, what did we do? We helped the algorithm become more accustomed to how we work and how we're going to work moving forward. And of course, uh, replace developers with the AI is the final point. Um, we've seen in the past and also in the more near future, of course, that we've seen Code Guru for AWS be extremely helpful for implementing changes and um, pretty much act is what Copilot is doing just now. Um, in terms of right now, Copilot is free, but uh, we've seen not only, of course, with AWS and other, you know, kind of 
platforms that they are implementing paid uh, paid sections for um, for these services. Of course, that's not a service I would really mind paying for. I would definitely not have an issue paying for that at all. As it you know, like I said, I, I listed my pros and cons earlier. So um, just kind of some fun here that I wanted to have. Uh, if currently we are at stage three, if we're actually going to kind of put this in the real terms, uh, we are in the re uh, reinforce the AI with developer section. So kind of just get your heads turning, kind of see what uh, what the future is pretty much going to be holding moving forward. But thank you guys so much for tuning in. I really appreciate it. I hope you guys got some value from this. Uh, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share this with friends or family. Alrighty, bye-bye.